It was not just basketball and he was not just a player. Let's take a look at this. That's Kobe's Instagram bio. Kobe Bryant, writer, producer, investor. And yes, he could have added something like, oh, by the way, I used to be pretty decent with a basketball in my hands, but no mention of basketball. Because you know, everybody knows it. He is undoubtedly the best basketball player of his generation, but above that, his mentality, his quenchless desire to win made him the personification of the concept of being more than an athlete. Because Kobe was definitely something more. So the question needs to be, what comes next? What can I do? What is my passion? Not what, where I can create the most value or generate the most revenue, but what is my next passion? The investment industry, the storytelling industry, those are the two businesses that I'm absolutely locked in and focused on. Kobe started investing years before leaving the NBA. He created a venture capital firm, the Brian Steinbell, who was very successful. Right now, the firm manages more than two billions in assets. And this activity provided Kobe with the money needed to propel the other businesses he was in, the ones he truly loved. In 2016, Brian founded Granity Studios, a media company focused on storytelling around sports. They realized Dear Basketball, a short movie inspired by the farewell letter Kobe wrote in his last season in the NBA. And well, the movie won the Oscar. To my wife, Vanessa, our daughters, Natalia, Gianna, and Bianca, ti amo con tutto il mio cuore, you are my inspiration. Thank you so much, guys, thank you. Sport can be a way out for many kids, and even if you don't make it to the NBA, it can still preserve you from walking down other very dangerous paths. To offer a young generation a way out, Kobe founded the Mamba Academy, giving free access to basketball to hundreds of kids. The helicopter was going there on Sunday morning. The real end behind Kobe's investment always exceeded the pure speculation. He wasn't in this game for the money. He was here to inspire people, to challenge people in being their best. This was Kobe's mission. The people that we bring in, these obsessives that we bring in, are challenging themselves to do the best job that they think they can do. That's what I'm there for, is for them to constantly look in the mirror and self-assess and challenge themselves. There would have been many other projects involving the community. He probably would have started something similar to LeBron's I Promise school, offering free education to poor kids. But unfortunately, we will never know. What we do know instead was his outstanding spirit of sacrifice, the Mamba mentality. Something that exceeded the normal power of will of us, regular human beings. And maybe that's why the news shocked me so much. I look up at people like Kobe as superhumans, those who can do incredible things, those who don't abide to the regular flow of destiny. No, they dominate it. And all of a sudden, you realize that they are humans like us and that life can be unfair to them as much as it can be to us. In his tragic and unjust end, I believe that Kobe teaches us one last thing that applies to anyone, anyone who works hard and who struggles in the pursuit of his goals. And the lesson is that struggles and sacrifices will make us reach our goal, but the accomplishment itself must not be the only reason why we work hard. We are so obsessed with the end that we are losing the process, which is the real thing, because the process is life and life it's like music. When you listen to a song, you don't just skip to the end because that's where everything resolves. No, we just enjoy the moment, the flow, the process. Falling in love with the process. It won't prevent life from being unfair or unjust, but at least when the music stops, we will have lived life to the fullest. And this is the biggest lesson that Kobe Bryant has given me.
What can I say? Mamba out.